Today, I will be covering the electrical conduction in the heart, followed by a brief description of the Wigger's diagram. Electrical conduction in the heart begins at the sinoatrial node, or SA node, which is a group of pacemaker cells located in the right atrium capable of spontaneous depolarization. The impulse travels down the internodal tracts to the AV node, which is responsible for initiating a delay in the impulse to allow sufficient time for ventricular filling. The depolarization wave then travels down the His bundles and into the right and left bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers in each side of the heart. For the duration of my presentation, I will go, be going over the Wigger's diagram, which is a graphical representation of the cardiac cycle. In this image, ventricular systole is highlighted in purple and ventricular diastole in blue, which corresponds to the ventricular volume line here in blue. During diastole, the ventricles are filling, and during systole, the ventricles are contracting, and thus the ventricular volume is decreasing. In order to understand the Wigger's diagram, we must keep in mind the flow of blood through the heart. Focusing in on the left side of the heart specifically, blood enters the left atrium through, from the lungs and then moves past the mitral valve into the ventricles. Once the pressure in the left ventricle builds up, the blood pushes against the aortic valve and passes into the aorta and into systemic circulation. Now, the upper panel of the Wigger's diagram represents the varying pressures within the aorta, atria, and ventricles. Focusing in on the atrial pressure line, which is depicted as the lower black dashed line, we see that in correspondence with the atrial depolarization depicted by the P wave on the ECG, atrial pressure increases during atrial systole or contraction. As you all know, the QRS complex corresponds to ventricular depolarization, which precedes ventricular contraction as shown by the increase in ventricular pressure seen here in the red continuous line. At the peak of the R wave, the mitral valve closes, which is the first heart sound because pressure in the ventricles have become greater than the pressure in the atria. During this isovolumetric contraction phase, Ventricular pressure increases rapidly as both the mitral and aortic valves are closed. Once there is sufficient pressure to push open the aortic valve, blood flows into the aorta, which is depicted by the, increasing, the increase in the atrial pressure line. Once the pressure in the ventricle falls below the pressure in the aorta, which occurs in the late phase of ventricular systole, the aortic valve closes, corresponding to the second heart sound. Interestingly, there's a small notch created in the aortic pressure line, which is known as the dichrotic notch. This is due to the backflow of blood pushing against the aortic valve once it closes, which tempor temporarily increases pressure in the aorta. After this point, the pressure in the aorta decreases over time until the next heartbeat cycle. The next phase of the cardiac cycle is isovolumetric relaxation. At this point, the ventricles have been emptied and the pressure in the ventricles continues to fall until it becomes lower than the pressure in the atria. The mitral valve opens, allowing for ventricular filling and the cycle begins again.